David, can you hear us? He can hear us, all right. Uh, it's a kind of, uh, uh, Gary George, I'm glad you are here. This is kind of a, a continuation of our city council meeting that we had. Uh, and Autumn brought this up and ends up being a good, uh, good concept. Uh, and I think what we want to do is try to see what we can do uh, and what, is, what we need to do, I guess. Uh, Autumn, you got anything? That yeah. Um, so the question is our yellow bag program. And um, it's, I think, been, gosh, 15 years uh, in, in uh, an active program. And so far, it's been really great. Um, but I think uh, rolling into the future, I think we've had um, qu quite a bit of residents that uh, would like to use their, their own bag. And um, currently, let me just kind of go over what we're currently doing. Um, you can purchase a yellow bag from Hart City Hall, 30 gallon bag for 75 cents, 15 gallon bag for 35. Um, our recycling, uh, Carroll County Solid Waste provides a uh, recycling bin for everybody. Um, they also offer carts. Um, um, the other programs in the area are Green Forest. These are the ones that I thought were would be a great replacement for what we're doing currently. Um, they have any two bags, so th any two 35-gallon bags can be put out on the curb. If you need additional bags, then you can purchase a tag for $1.75. Um, and then there is a monthly charge of $14 for that. And Berryville has a similar program with one bag. Um, I truly feel like the two bag program would be the best option. It's either that, in my opinion, or uh, doing a fully biogradable bag that we buy and do it similarly to the yellow bag. So um, this addition, <coughs> excuse me, this additional charge that needs a tag for 175. What's the 1434 a month? So the 1434 is the monthly program cost. Okay. So right now our cost for the yellow bag program is twelve dollars. Twelve dollars and fifty eight cents. Unfortunately it is a little more there. So, okay, I was going to say, is there a reason why you know, more? I get you, I might as well set up the table so there's a microphone That's what here. Let's be going to turn tail maybe. Uh, yeah. It really doesn't have to be. It's y'all's program. What y'all set up, we're here to do. And I don't think that we'd have any problem keeping your rate where Maintain your rate is. Maintaining my rate. Okay. You know? Yes, I, I believe you would the city would set the rate. Yeah, I think you're going to have to sit oh, at the table. We can't hear you, yeah. George. Okay. Yeah, Just get the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> what you guys are doing. saying is pretty much the city's going to set the rate. I mean, it's y'all's contract, uh, you know, a contract between you and you and us, and we we wouldn't have no problem leaving the rates where they're at. Okay, so there'd really be no change in the rates if we would just went. And we could either we'd do the two bag program whether it's in a cart or not. On our on our side, yes. On our side, yes. If you wanted to to do the two bag at your at the uh, Green Force cost was was fourteen. Yeah. I, I'm not. I don't have nothing with me. Either. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know where I just got out of court. 14. Okay. 14 and your yellow bag program is somewhere 12. around twelve right yeah. now. Twelve fifty-eight. Twelve fifty-eight. Uh, that would actually be that would be up to the city if they want a two a two bag program at at twelve, and then whatever your bag tag was, whatever you wanted to charge for your bag tag to best. Uh, now, how Just would, a best suit, best suit your. Then how would that happen if, if uh, you know, say I put out uh, 
normally two bags, but all of a sudden one month I put out three bags. What happens to that? We would, we, unless you had a tag, it would be left. Honestly. Yeah, we would leave it because this, but, they okay. purchased the tag from you, and then like in like in Bearville or Green Forest, if we pick that up, then the city's losing losing money. Okay. And it's also costing us money to get to get. And I better. talked to April. It, it could be like y'all the way the way I believe the way Bearville works is they sell the tags and they reimburse us for that extra trash. It'd be the same, I mean, the same kind of deal. Well, we get, we get reimbursed now from the city for a, a, it's a, a, it's a residential trash fee. I don't, to be honest with you, Butch, I don't know what all's involved in that in April. So, so you would tonight. charge, somehow you keep up and, because I noticed uh, one of my, uh, this month I just got my water bill and I got a, I guess it was a, X or LX, extra large or something. I had more trash than normal. Okay. So I got a $20, 20 something dollar okay. trash bill. And y'all build the city and then the city builds us as a customer. Well, no, I don't know where my $20, I mean, somehow I yeah. got extra large. And I don't usually do that. But. Um. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. The, the, way, don't, the way it works. Is that an is, April question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah, is an April the, question. I, the, I know um, how it works. I mean, you, you end up, the, our drivers will tell us we'll build the city, and then we get paid for it. But yes, they, if there's they, extra put it on right the now bill. because there's no bag tag involved, if there is extra right now, uh, then our drivers will write down that extra. And yes, April contacts the city. And uh, they put it on the water bill and they put it on the water bill okay. uh, in the case with the bag tag, though, the way we do Green Forest and Burville is if it hasn't got their bag tag on it, we don't pick it up. And like Gary was saying, there, in that franchise fee, there's some some amount of of the cost that you are charging for this so, two bag hand load mm -hmm. or the bag tag one. We get like eight percent of that, or, or we or we get the trash percentage. amount back. Like, and I don't. Like I said it is an April question, but I think there's a dollar seventy five. We get paid for our trash, and the city makes whatever the city makes. I mean, yeah. and I'm not sure really, but exactly how, how what the so, percentage is or nothing. Simon, do you know how that works? Since the water bill comes through you. I have to apologize. I was kind of tuning out, and we we're just gossiping back there. What was that? Uh, how? I mean, I noticed on my water bill this month, I got a, a note under sanitation, uh, XL or something. So it was a twenty-dollar fee. I don't know what that means, um, to be honest. Everything that we, so we get, we get a you get a spreadsheet from spreadsheet us. from you guys, and they assist sit to the bills. But I, I really, I really don't have much involvement at all, at all that the office people kind of take care of that um so i i'm sorry i don't really have oh, no it. that's okay i didn't know so you get something from yes it's from all us. waste that's right and then yes. you just put that on it, the sewer it bill. gives us a ad, i believe an address it's and, overflow sheets what april calls it right um and so. you know and eureka shouldn't have much of an overflow sheet because uh we pick up all the yellow bags. It'd be the different kind of services is where the overflow would, would be, come yeah, in. It would be a handload or a polycard or what service do you have? Well, this is a commercial. Okay. Commercial. So that's, yeah, because commercial. Okay, yeah. commercial will pick it. That's exactly what it was. It goes on the overflow sheet, and then we bill. We send it to the city. city puts it on the water bill. Okay. No, I think that was part of the problem that uh, council member Ed Benzino was talking about was people were coming to his dumpster and dumping and yeah. and having those overage charges and stuff like that. So, and that's bad, but it's not. It's everywhere. I mean, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. Everybody wants to get something for free. So, in these systems in Green Forest and Berryville, you have to use a thirty-five pound or thirty-five gallon bag. You can't just sit. Three smaller white bags out there. Yes, yeah, you, you can. can. Yes. You can. It's uh, it's equivalent to thirty-five. I gallon. think that they I think Bearable's wording is actually a thirty-two gallon bag or can, but they don't make a thirty-two gallon, so thirty to thirty-five somewhere okay. around there is what we, what we do. But you know, the easiest way is most people buy a couple thirty-gallon cans and set them out there, and whatever's in there, we pick up. You know. Okay. 
But like you were saying, yes, you, we'd pick up the smaller ones. It's an equivalent, 30, two 30 gallon equivalent. Yeah, two you know. 12 gallons or Yeah, probably, you know, yeah. Or three. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. What is a tall tr kitchen trash bag? Yeah. I can't. So those white 13, ones. 13 gallons. Okay, 13. so 13 two of those, you would take those as one. Yes, yes. Okay. And you know, if you get a 30 gallon can out there, you can get a lot more than that in there. I mean, and yeah, yeah. most of the time, most, like you rent through bearable, there's bags, but most of them you're picking up these 30 gallon cans and dumping them. So can they just use a can without yeah, yeah. using a bag? Yeah. yeah. I guess. So I mean, it's a lot, necessary. it's a lot cleaner, to, you yeah. know, but yes, we, we pick up the can, it's 30 ga two would, 32 gallon I cans or bags. Uh, yeah, I would recommend that the contract be amended to that, to, to two 32 or 35 gallon cans or bags. And if we change this, if the city council votes on this to change it, how long would it take for y'all to? Butch is on our board. We, when we have a meeting, we can do it, you know. We don't even got to wait. I mean, would we really even have to wait for a meeting? We could. I mean, because I mean, the board, I don't even know where the board would be involved. Would it be changing the no, contract? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. That's I what I, yeah, it wouldn't. I think the board would be involved in the amendment of your Springs contract. I because believe you know, once you get it set up and, and Butch makes a phone call and says, let's start this on, uh, on this day. Or something. And this is going to stop a lot of people coming into town and dropping yellow bags on your curbs, too. You know, we're going to be picking up y'all's trash, not who's, whoever's. All right. I think David oh, has a... Oh, David? Yes, uh, just a quick question, and sorry I don't recall the, the names of the gentlemen from uh, Solid Waste, but... Um, I remember the last time you guys brought out the carts. I think one was 20 gallon, one was 30 gallon, whatever it was. Um, if someone was just to, to buy a cart, say at Home Depot or Lowe's, that's 30 gallon and set it out, would you still pick that up even though it's not Carroll County Solid Waste's property? It was 30 gallon? Yes, uh, yes. What we, would, what we would do is we try to honor Eureka Springs uh, contract. That's why we would, if there's extra trash out there without a bag tag on it, if we picked it up, and I would expect the city to call us and say, hey, we're, you're picking up trash that you're paying for and we're losing money because they're not buying a tag. Uh, most of those carts that you're talking about are around 40 gallon. Okay. Now, uh, we would, so, that cart, you know, if they if they had a bunch of small 13-gallon bags in that cart, uh, but that cart wasn't overflowing, we would we would take that we would take that whole whole cart is what we would do. Uh, if it was overflowing, then you no, know, we would require a bag tag on it because it's it's like five you know five gallons over so. And you're like in, in Bearable, some people have big drums that aren't real nice. We'll pick about 30 gallons of trash out of it. You yeah, know? The, the cart size is, you know, if, if the resident is buying the cart size, uh, you know, some of, them, some of them got 55 gallon carts that they've got out there. We just try to, try to uphold the contract and try to Try to pick up you as know, much by, trash by as we're supposed to. what size it says is on that cart, we try to take out the 35 gallons. So you don't just ignore the cart because it may be a 55 gallon cart. No. You're going to look at it and make sure no. there's yes. just two yellow bags or two black bags. Now, the only yes. time that would come into play is like if someone has, you know, if someone bought their own 95 gallon cart that we can't dump, we don't like dumping them with our trucks because then when we break them, they want them replaced. So we prefer that people, you know, use try to use 30, 40 gallon ones, yes. Okay. That, if that made any sense. <laughs> yeah. So should we explore the other option of having a uh, compostable bag, a new yellow bag? I think the problem with getting a new compostable, I don't know whether we they make one. I'm, I'm so the, the vendor that we use for the yellow bags mm -hmm one and only vendor that I could find for yellow bags. Um, I could reach out to them about compostable bags. Well, I mean, I just did a little research online, not even with that company. I'm talking even just like Webstraw, which is a common um, vendor 
Um, I found them for 60 cents. Um, I saw 60 cents to a dollar is really what I found bag. them per bag. How would, how would um, that benefit anybody though, really? Yeah, that, that would drive the well, cost. It, it would not really change the program, but at least it would be a better bag. Because bag. that is really the complaint. The bag is terrible. And then so if the bag is very thin anyway, then you might as well just get it compostable so it's better off for the environment. Um, but, you know, or, or do we just go with the, with the two bag system and um, do the tags? The reason the bags are yellow is, according to our ordinance, it's supposed to have our logo on it, which it doesn't have. But okay. So it's distinguishable to Carroll County solid waste. I gotcha. I don't know if those come, come, uh, those other bags are, I don't know what they look like. If they look any different than a black plastic bag or? They're, well, they're most of the time green, but they're uh, biodegradable. Yeah. Of course, of course, people could do it on their own. Too, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They could choose that bag yeah. Instead of the black for their any bag. Yeah. Well, that would be nice. You can encourage it. I mean, Eureka is one of the only places I've ever seen that just whatever's out on the street we pick up. It's kind of it's kind of odd. I mean, yellow, and yellow bags is, I think that we visited it. 10 or 15 times since we've worked here that's the uh, Eureka's wanted to do something with them and you are really the first group that's went forward to well, the, well, the, excuse me, the reason for this is to encourage people not to put aluminum plastic glass uh, newspapers in makes sense yeah because you know, they're buying because they're buying the bag yeah mm -hmm. I mean that that's the whole purpose of the yellow bags but I think at this point... But not some people do it anyway. But. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think people are using more than the allotted two bags anyway. So I think two. if we made this a two-bag system, then it would... That would encourage recycling would be, more than buying the bags, I exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah. That's you know, Bearable did the, the super recycling program, and they did one bag. And I don't see how a family of four can do one 30-gallon bag, but, I mean, it's worked in Bearable for years. Well, this, I've been, I've been working on a, a budget for our meeting budget, and there's things I've been working on, and uh, I've divided the county up into zones. And zone one, which is the center of the county, and then this part of the county across the Kings River, is zone two. Uh, more more recycling comes out of this part of the county, uh, here in West County and, and around the lake, uh, but from, from really Eureka Springs on, uh, most of our recycling, a higher, the highest percentage of our recycling comes out of this part. And I don't think county. it has nothing to do with the yellow bags, so, it's just uh, people here want to. That, I believe it is too, the, the people they want to recycle. They want to reduce the waste stream. Yeah. And I do not believe that would change their minds. I believe they would continue to want to reduce the waste stream. Well, I think that's a key issue is, is I don't think we need to do anything that encourages people not to recycle. Yeah. And yeah, the bag, yellow bags are flimsy, but if you just put your if you don't put cans or paper bottles and aluminum in there, then they're not tending to break as much. Now, I haven't quizzed people who are complaining about how the yellow bags tear what they put into them, but I think that's, that's a whole logic behind it. Uh, so, okay. Autumn, um, I will say that um, I've tested out several of the compostable bags from Webstrom. Mm -hmm. And they are worse than the yellow bags. <laughs> okay. Right. I mean, they literally, you go to pick them up with probably, you know, it'll be a 30 gallon bag, it'll have 10 bags or 10 pounds of whatever in it, and it just rips from the bottom. They're horrible. Well, and I have to say, too, that um, 
the white glad bags, those kitchen bags, I can't get them from my kitchen, pull them out of the, the container without them ripping. Uh, so I think that's the nature of, of uh, plastic is they're just getting thinner and thinner. Yeah. Now, granted, the yellow bags are real thin. I mean, transparent, but uh, but even the white bags are rip. I don't. I never get them up up to the uh, without them ripping. So. Well, uh, I th I think the bottom line here is that the yellow bags. If I understand the program, I th I moved here. I thought the yellow bags somehow paid for recycling. And when we bought the bags, money was generated and it was used to pay for recycling. That made sense. To say that they, yellow bags are just used to remind people to recycle, I think is a waste of money. Not to remind it, to encourage. Encourage, yeah, but I would but do it no matter what. There's Limit, no limit on your, the yellow bag. That's what I mean, limiting kind of, your uh, trash, I think, would, would uh, promote recycling more than having to buy a yellow bag. I mean, my, my thought, you know, okay. if I knew they were only going to pick up two bags at my house, I mean, uh, that's all I'm going to have. Put them yeah. In recycling. Yeah, that's yeah. all I would have was two bags. Bag. Yeah. And, you know, and like I said, this Bearville did do that super recycling one bag, but I think y'all would get so many complaints if y'all went one bag. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be answering the phone. With, right. I mean, because they are used to putting out as much as they want here in Eureka. Yeah, yeah I know several people put out four or five yellow bags. There, and... Butch, there's, there's stops that got 25, wow. 30. Wow. I mean, really. Very few, but they are stops that's got that. But I believe that stops where people are running it out from the county. I, I'm almost certain if you've got people from the county that comes in here to Hearts, buys yellow bags uh, for whatever you said, 75 cents, and fills two or three of them a week and then sets them out on the curb here somewhere. And that's what they pay for their trash. That. Two dollars or two fifty, very cheap for them. Yeah, very, very cheap. Yes. Well, and I just kind of want to bring up um, how much we're paying for the yellow bags. The, the yellow bags are thirty thousand dollars, and I think that we receive in thirty-five thousand dollars. So, yeah. Maybe that. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. So it's not like it's not paying for anything. Yeah. So it's not paying for anything. It's not. Yeah. That was my misconception. That it was paying. The yeah. money was. Being used for something else, yeah. So part of the recycling system, but it's not. Well, Eureka Springs, like Berryville and Green Forest and all the island now, all are under contract with Carroll County Solid Waste, and they're the the official uh, designated people to pick up the garbage and, and recycle uh -huh. in town. So, um, well, and then. Gary, and, I mean, that's that's one issue is, is the yellow bags. I, it's up to the council as to what, what we want to do. Uh, you know, I think uh, you guys are kind of the experts. You've been <laughs> picking up garbage for, <laughs> for a long time uh, in Eureka Springs. Uh, and, you know, Eureka was known, I think we were the first recycling in the state. Yeah. And we're always getting uh, awards for our recycling center, and, and you all do a great job out there. And that's... I think that's what George was sitting on, too. I mean, I, uh, people recycle here because they want to. I don't think it, whatever y'all did, I don't think it's going to affect that. I mean, there's six million pounds of trash goes through this little bitty center here in town. That's that's a lot. I mean, that's something Eureka, I mean, Eureka does good. Six million pounds of recycling. What did I say? Trash. Yeah, six million pounds of recycling goes through there. That's a lot of recycling. Yeah, yeah. It, it, for, and for a little, it's a lot for anywhere, but for a little community, it's a, it really is. It's a lot. Um, well, do we want to touch on the... Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to switch over. And, and Gary and, and George, I don't know if you're familiar. Are you familiar with Fruit Loops? Fruit Loops. Yeah, Food Loops. Food Loops. Food Loops. Food Loops. Oh, food loops. Food loops. <laughs> no. Not Fruit Loops. Food I Loops. I did say Fruit Loops. I thought you said Fruit Loops. <laughs> 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 loops yeah. um, they, and I don't know whether Carroll County can do anything, but there's a company in Fayetteville. And Autumn, I missed the, the, uh, they, they basically are a compost company that um, does strictly compost, and they sell compostable items, um, paper items. Um, and they have offered, if we can get enough people um, 
i.e. residents and business owners, that they will make a trip over here and pick up our compost. So I was really thinking that if even just the people that were in this meeting, I mean, it's four, four business owners, and if we had even a handful of locals that would want to contribute to this, I think we could get them to come over here um, for a pickup. And, you know, I've just done a lot of research about it, and, you know, um, food compost is 80% is of what's going in our landfill. I didn't even realize that, and that's a huge, huge number. Um, so I was thinking that even if we had a couple of these stations around town, like community center, you know, and obviously a couple of the businesses, if they had them, you could still dump there. Um, but if we could get a few more people on board with composting, they, I think it would be even a better situation. I was trying to think of the guy's name. He used to do it right behind our place at the at the regular compost facility there. He started the food compost in Eureka. It was a it was a smelly nasty mess. It was a real good idea, but it really was a nuisance. Uh, do you remember his name? He was uh, he was y'all's public works director for a real short time. Uh, can't think of his name. Berryville didn't take him from us, did he? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. It was it was. It's probably the feller before. Um, he he worked he worked for Public Works for a long like twenty years and uh -huh. then he he took the job reluctantly took the director's job and it didn't last long. And I can't think of his name. Yeah, but, I can't think but, of but he did he did try that out back and it was uh, it was awful. <laughs> well, and, then, and I understand that, but yeah. I mean I think if they're if they're here every week, um, it would be no different than me putting it. Uh, putting our scraps so, so, in the in the so dumpster. the city wouldn't really be composting; they'd just be saving it to be composted. Saving it to be okay. composted. Are they going to pick it up at a, a compost site, or are they going to each, each place? Each, going yeah, to yeah. Residents or business, or yep. like a route. Like a route. In, in now, is there a problem with Carroll County solid waste with something with our right? Family? Yeah. I don't know about our contract and how that would uh, With us doing it? Within. Or what? Well, no. I, I would believe it? I understand what Butch is I missed asking. it. Uh, any solid waste district, the main goal of any solid waste district has got to be to keep everything out of the landfill that's possible uh, because our landfills are getting cool. I think the... If that program became a, a good liable program and, and people actually use that program, it would reduce the waste stream. So it would reduce money that we're making, like at a restaurant if we've got a four yard set there. Uh, a restaurant mainly, I mean, food is their business. So out of that four yard, they could probably do away with most do away of it. With Three and a half yards yeah. of their of their trash, so that would lower. But I don't. I wouldn't. And but you're on the board. I wouldn't have any. I just. I don't see where, as a district, we should have a a problem with that. Uh, because you're not going to reduce. It. You're not going to reduce it all. There's there is waste besides besides food waste, and, and let's say you were right, if it reduced it uh, 80%, let's say everything, they really got in there and started working this, and it reduced Eureka Spring City waste by 80%, then we would be picking up 20% of what we used to pick up, being paid for 20% of what we used to be paid. I, I would say that as director of the district, I would encourage recycling. Uh, I would encourage Eureka Springs if they wanted to try something like that. And once this got going, we would just, I would want to sit down with you and, and maybe the other board members and, and see what, you know, I, we can't come in and run the town for nothing, but I don't see how we would be where it would hurt us because we really, we're under a franchise contract with the cities not to make money anyway. Our, our money making is to be in the county. Uh, 
because we the cities try to get their contracts in as low as possible and everything. So I think most I think most of this would probably be uh, George most would be commercial probably. I can't see mm -hmm. private individuals taking their food scraps. I know some people do and have their own compost, mm -hmm. uh, but so it's probably mostly commercial. Uh, but even if they reduced it by, you know, 40 or 50 percent, because yeah. I know we had to switch our landfills. Yeah. We're going to Missouri now. Uh, well, yeah, actually, uh, we've uh, cards is hauling out now for us, doing all the hauling out for yeah. us. They are going to Kansas and Missouri. Uh, actually, cards actually had a hard time getting landfills too. Uh, so, but in a way, the, the solid waste company would reduce their cost because we'd have less hauling. Uh, yes, that's what I was going. To, I was going to elaborate on, and I was yeah. going to see if Gary agreed with me on this. What was reduced would redu be reduced on the, the you know, other end. So I don't. I really don't think you see would, our thing. We don't get rich. Hurt. We're just providing a service and making enough money to keep on rolling. So I mean, if we reduce it, we're going to reduce our expenses too. Yes, and that's what I was going. I mean, that's that's that. just so, my thought off the top of my head. I mean, we're 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 thinking, studies you know? into it as this went on after after six months. I could give you a good study of what it's yeah. doing. You know, and I hope the program works. Most of them don't work real good, but I mean, it'd be great if it did. It really would. And I well, like I know there's. Yeah. No, not like you said. Now, I thought they were going to put on both sides. Yeah. Well, and I think there's there's several people in town that um, have been trying to get this going for several years now. Um, you know, so I don't know how much commitment I could get from people, um, but I figured that this was good time to mention it. <laughs> Everything's, so, a, we, we Everything's a good idea work. unless it's like work, and then if it turns you into know, work, they're not going to add it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we've got well, anywhere from 50 to 80 restaurants within the mm -hmm. area. And so that's a lot of food. Yeah. It is. Food waste. Yeah. What was Roger doing back in 98? Back in 98 with Iran, you reckon? Uh, oh, Roger Minor? Yeah, Roger Minor was director, and we was going, he chose one restaurant. It was a restaurant that's closed down. Ozark Village? Yes. And they put, they had two containers there. I think that was at the same time when, they, and, uh, when Eureka tried they to compost put all it. They food waste into one, and we picked it up with a clean truck. We made sure our truck was clean and picked that container up and then took it down to where the compost was. That, that's at the same time, Butch. That's the yeah. same time. That was, see, and I, I thought that's what you were talking about. What they tried to do is Eureka tried to compost food waste. Mm -hmm. It was awful. But just sitting there and going somewhere else to compost, yeah. it's fine. You know? Yeah. But actually to try to compost. Yeah, it'd be it no yourself, different, yeah. I think, than it would be a separate trash can, obviously, but yeah. it would be um, I think easy, easy enough, you know, that I'm they, wanting to I implement would, it. Yeah. <laughs> you I know? would say this, I've been in this long enough that if 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 that program could get started and you you know the people of Eureka better than I do, but I know the people of Eureka like to recycle and, and want to recycle and want to save the environment. If this program really took effect and was a successful program, you would have a lot of other towns wanting to follow that program. Mm -hmm. That's what I was we, thinking. Berryville might say, well, you know, it's 12 miles away, so they might. Yeah. I have, Berryville's uh, getting more restaurants. I have visited this uh, place. So did you. It's the place that had all the candy bars when they was out there, and it, we pulled in on the bus. Oh, it almost made me sick. Yes. <laughs> but you ought to go it visit was it. Bad. It, it was, if it wasn't in your community, it's fine. But it, it, it's it's bad. <laughs> but they well, it's rotting well, food. It but they, no, mean, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be if you're just picking it up and taking it away. But uh, you ought to go visit it. It's really really neat. And uh, one of the ladies on the bus with us got a few bags of the. Uh, the soil that they yeah. sell at the end, yeah. and she said she planted tomatoes, and they grew it. To, I mean, it's a pretty neat place. Well, what are we thinking now, David? You got it's any only... questions or comments? Yeah, I just, um, you know, honestly, I think we should just get rid of the yellow bags and go to 
a regular bag that anybody can buy. Um, uh, I hear Autumn talk about the food loop program, which I'm still trying to do research on myself, um, on what that would look like for my business. But as far as residents are concerned, you know, I think it's just a lot easier to use a regular bag that's strong. And if our residents know they can put it in any container, um, that that would be the best deal for them. Instead of having to buy these yellow bags, set them out, people from other parts of the county come in and dump whatever, like they do at my business, which is driving me crazy because I get charged for it. But, um, I, I mean, just go to a regular bag. We already know our people are going to recycle. We know that a lot of people already compost their own stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's my two cents worth. I totally agree. Do we, are we, is this a quorum? No. No. No, we can't do it. It's just anything. a workshop. Okay. I mean, we'll just bring it up to council. Okay. Yeah, on that. Um, Can we go ahead and put it on the city council agenda? I'll put, I, I delayed the publishing of the agenda for this workshop to make sure. Okay. But yeah, I'll go ahead and publish that today and put discussion right. on the on the agenda. Uh, and if any of y'all would like any, you know, how to word anything, you're welcome to holler at us and somebody could. Come check out one of the other contracts. I mean, so you got some wording there where you're not just right. All right yeah. When we we Run find around. out something, we may have y'all uh, come back over at our next council meeting, which is when December twelfth, eleventh, Monday, uh, six o'clock. Would down you here. mind if Susan came up and said a few words here? No. In the, in yeah. The... Sorry. Um, thank you very much, Mayor. I'm Susan Hubbard, and I started the recycling program here about 27 or 28 years ago. Um, and um, I just am really excited that we're talking about this, and I just think that the authorities' attitude about reducing waste being primary has just been a consistent message for decades, and I really appreciate that. And I'm really proud. Um, I helped to start the Solid Waste Authority, and, and I'm proud of the work that everybody's doing. Um, on the yellow bags, I just wanted to say, if you just go in there and change the yellow bags without communicating to people, you're going to create an uproar. And um, it's, I don't think that's necessary because I think you're trying to do something good. But people, many people associate the yellow bags with the recycling program and the funding. And it did used to fund recycling. And one of the things, and maybe these gentlemen will agree with me on, is that there is no money to do education. And I think that these folks do a great job educating as much as they can, but it's nowhere near the education that we did to get it going. And why people are so committed to recycling in this area is because they, they understood it. And now I think, you know, I've been back here about two and a half years, and I am constantly bombarded uh, with questions from people about recycling. And they, they, they just feel like there's nowhere to go for information. And, you know, this bag prices, um, that, that used to pay for education program. And the bag prices, which are very low, and I'm sure some people don't think they're low, but they are extremely low, um, are, have not moved in a long time. So obviously now there's $5,000 at the end of the year, but there used to be you know, maybe like $25,000, and that all went into education programs or a pilot program with some restaurants or many different exciting and wonderful things that I think the community would totally embrace if they knew, okay, you know, uh, yellow bags maybe aren't necessary anymore. I mean, the, the, the whole yellow bag thing, the whole meaning of that has been lost, believe me. I started that program and we're not, you, you caught it, Mayor, that, it, you know, it was about educating people to keep the cans and bottles out, but the education came from the funding from the bags, okay? The funding from that bags helped to pay for education and we don't have that anymore. Um, I've been doing recycling and um, solid waste now for 35 years. I still do it. That's my active job. I work all over the country. Um, and I'm certainly happy to help here. I'm glad to be back home. It took a long time when the pandemic happened. They finally realized we didn't have to work in our offices anymore, and so I moved right back as soon as I could. But um, I think, you know, a couple things that I heard concern me is, like, 
the two bags instead of the one. The uh, allowing for two bags is like just saying you don't have to recycle anymore because you can put it all in two bags. I think one bag and a tag, like Berryville has, I think we are as progressive as Berryville. I think the residents are as progressive as Berryville, and I really think that, that that's what we need to consider. Um, on the compostable bag program, I um, not bragging, but I helped to develop the standards for compostable bags. Compostable bags only break down in a compost site. So like these gentlemen said, a compostable bag is kind of meaningless and a solid waste program is going to go into a landfill. Landfills, they design them so things don't break down. They don't want it to break down. So those, they dig up those compostable bags five, ten years, and they're just still sitting in there. If we were lining food waste carts with them and helping people to realize how to use them, then they could be actually composted. They have to go to a compost site where they have really high temperatures and all kinds of things happen. So um, I'm just you know, cautioning that a lot of people know this meeting is happening and I told them I was coming. They're, you know, they don't understand. They think the yellow bag program needs to be revamped so it pays for education. So if they just immediately hear, all right, we're gonna get rid of it, I think it's just gonna be an unnecessary reaction. Whereas if the communication is how can we um, enliven our recycling program and how can we build it and, and what are some funding mechanisms for education. Maybe the tag, um, a portion of the tag could go to education and then we could help people to understand that the tag kind of replaces the bag and they're not losing anything in their recycling program. I'm sorry I've taken so much time. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again for your work on this and I'm happy to help support um, positive change and once again thank you so much for all your years of service and, and everything that you're doing and your attitude about reduction is admirable and, and appreciated. Thank you. I kind of make sure you I, I kind of agree with Susan like with the variables the super recycling program they started. I didn't think it'd work and it does. I mean it's it limits the it forces them to recycle more. You know so I, I don't know. I know as a family of four, I couldn't get by with a 30 gallon bag recycling everything I do. So I, I don't know really, I don't know. But it, bearable works, it do, I mean it really does. Well, I, I like the idea too that, that Susan mentioned too. I think what we've lost is recycling. I mean, I'm looking around the room and with the exception of, of Susan and, and you guys, uh, we're the only ones that have been around here 25 years or more and we forgot what it was like and what the yellow bags originally started. The majority of the town doesn't remember because we've got people who've lived here less than 15 years. Uh, and they've always questioned, ah, oh, those yellow bags. And I keep reinforcing it's not, it's to encourage re, uh, recycling. Uh, it's not to pay for anything, it's just encouraging. And it does. Uh, you know, it certainly encourages me to do it. Uh, you know, I'm, and I have to admit, and I'm so proud of the Carroll County Solid Waste, I look around the state and see other recycling centers and what they don't take, and Little Rock is one of them. I'm just amazed that they don't take glass right now. Uh, and, in, and we take, you know, uh, plastics, paper, glass, aluminum. We take uh, what we can get rid of. Really you know, and, and actually make a little profit over it, you know. But, uh, and I think that's something we... A lot of other cities in Arkansas don't do, and you ought to be commended for that. But I'd like to continue on that education. I think that's the key factor. Mm -hmm. you know, getting we, people absolutely. to recycle. We actually won education program of the year uh, three or four years ago, five years ago. Uh, maybe, maybe longer. Maybe longer. <laughs> you know that goes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe longer. But I mean, we do have an education program, and we're. I mean. We're here for you for whatever. Thank and maybe you. that's something we can do and maybe I can get Susan involved. Hey, you know, we, <laughs> we need people. I mean, we had people that were really into it and uh, man, life's changed the last few years. We're working our butts off just trying to get the jobs done, you know? So we really don't have no one real good in for our education program at the moment. Yeah. We gotta send a guy from the recycling center and he'll go to talk to whoever and the next time it comes around they'll wanna talk to him, he's gone. I mean, it's. Life's changed a lot the last few years. How the recycling do you, changed too. So. How do we communicate with the city? 
how I do mean, we what do you do you put out flyer it, it, what do you do newspapers newspaper i mean you know back then i think that was the main thing we had uh, of course it was a lovely county probably that was real promoting okay. on it uh, and i think uh, your springs independent would promote it too okay you know? uh, and just getting people and like workshops like this that would let people know about what's going on. You know, the okay. recycling center, like when Susan was there, it was it was a visiting place. A lot of people would come down. It's not like it no more. Yeah. It's a it's a busy processing center now. It's just everything's changed. But I, but I remember before. I mean, everybody you go to recycling center, you see everybody in town down there. It has changed a lot. So, well, anybody else have anything? Yeah, it's great. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for yeah. thanks for coming thank over, you. and we're going to have uh, you know more anything, any conversation. Time, wants to come visit us, yeah, or a tour through the recycling center if a group or wants to get together with a tour. I think that's one of the best uh, informative and educational. Our office has moved to Bearable now, but I mean, I, any time I could come to meet meet whoever down yeah. there or get one of our guys down there, or whatever. So JD could show them around. I mean. Uh, preferably, and, and we may just have have uh, uh, city council. We may set up a tour because I don't know how many city council members have been out to the recycling center. Give us, a, head, give us a heads up because it's a mess, but we'd love it to show you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's really it's a busy it's little a place. Great idea, now. I think. Uh, and compared to where it was, you yeah. know, if, uh, moving it, moving the offices to Berryville helped. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, if there's nothing else, I want to thank everybody for attending. And, thank you. And many of the public that's watching this or listening to us, if you have any comments or questions or uh, suggestions, don't hesitate to let us know. And uh, We'll be, always be open to other alternatives and what we can do to make the city better. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.